Um, now, I'm, <coughs> we met during the first day of orientation, um, fall 2009, and ever since that day, I believe all of us would recognize him by a few characteristics. First would be his oversized nose, <laughs> laid back uh, fashion sense of shorts and flip flops to college, and definitely his loud, his loud vocals, which can be heard around the corridors of the ADB classroom. He's indeed a person with high charisma, a strong person with high dedication and commitment, um, being an outstanding leader as the ADP Student Council President, a great academic achiever, and lastly, a great friend. It is my honor to call upon the class of summer 2011 Valedictorian, Mr. George Francis Elwood. Thank you, Mr. Oversized Knows himself. <laughs> <laughs> Two years ago, a little handsome young boy stepped into a lovely orange building called Subang Square, <laughs> went into an elevator and headed to a lovely place called the 12th floor. The moment he opened the door, the first thing he saw was two senior students, busy, copying something that suspiciously looked like a math assignment. <laughs> Whilst copying, a third senior student was there telling them, told you guys not to leave your work till the last minute, right? Shouldn't have gone for that game of Dota last night, and you shouldn't have gone to the club. Casually, one of the two replied saying, dude, copying assignments, last minute work, it's all good, man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to ADP, which stands for American Degree Transfer Program. Or as the little handsome young boy heard from the two seniors on that day, all day play and all day party. Very good afternoon to the honored guests, His Excellency Ambassador Paul Jones, Deputy Vice, Chan Vice Chancellor of Taylor University, Mr. Pradip Nair, our beloved Dean of ADP, Dr. Rainier Baumister. <laughs> Invited guests, lecturers, and of course, the graduating students of summer 2011. Ladies and gentlemen, ADP has definitely taught us well and prepared us for the education in America. But for our batch, the class of summer 11, they didn't just prepare us academically. They prepared us for the move to the universities as well. We were the lucky ones who had to move, not once, but twice, <laughs> from our original location. And moving is now so common to us that moving to another university in the States isn't a big deal for us. So thank you, ADP. <laughs> Class of summer 11, we've come a long way. For most of us, it was a two-year journey. For some, it was a one-year journey. But no matter the length we stayed, it has definitely been one heck of an awesome ride. I'm very certain we'll always remember the times we had here in ADP. We'll always remember the stupid things that we told our lecturers. <laughs> For example, I once told Miss Bessie in a chemistry class that American chemistry is stupid. No offense, Mr. Ambassador, it was an intended joke. But <laughs> What I thought was the humblest joke turned into Miss Bessie giving me the best scolding of my life and the worst an ADP student can ever get. She asked me to quit ADP and go to Canada instead. <laughs> now, take a look at the faces around you. We'll always remember the friends that we have here in ADP who's always been here for us whenever we needed them, be it in good times or bad times. We'll always remember the friend who got cheated off 1,200 ringgit for stupidly logging into a fake Maybank website, open from her jungle. We'll always remember the friend who nagged us for not keeping the apartment clean. We'll always remember the friend who copied our homework. We'll always remember the birthday parties that we celebrated, the farewell dinners that we organized, and the events that we participated together with our friends. You see, all these are memories. Memories that some would want to forget, but will be cherished by others. And if anyone ever feels that you're being left out and that you have no friend, always remember, 
You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me, you've got a friend in us. Talking about friends, we already have our lifelong friends. Now, what do I mean by this? If ever, every single one of our friends decides to turn their back against us, we'll always have our lifelong friends to be there for us, our parents. Without them, we definitely wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't be able to meet all the awesome people here, the awesome lecturers, and all the awesome people out there. Sure, they're always forcing us to clean our room, or nagging at us for being lazy, for not taking our shower, but <laughs> raising us from young, still supporting us for our studies, isn't exactly an easy task. For that, our parents deserve a huge round of applause. Give them a hug after this and spend more time with them because we probably will be seeing them for the next two, three or maybe four years. I definitely wish that I can hug my parents after this, but they're currently on the flight which will only touch down when commencement ends. <laughs> However, I hope that from 30,000 feet above sea level, they can feel that I really am thankful to them for what they have done for me. <laughs> now where would we be without our awesome lecturers? To the lecturers, you were more than just a lecturer. You were our friends too. We can always joke around with you outside class after the intensive one hour of lecture. In fact, I think Miss Bessie probably would be scolding me if I mentioned American chemistry is stupid outside class instead of in class. I'm very certain that we, the class of summer 11, had a good run with you lectures. And on behalf of the class, thank you for always being there for us. And I hope that the class of summer 11 can join me to give our beloved lecturers a standing ovation. opportunity to personally thank Mr. Casey for all the assistance he gave me during my time in the student council and sorry for causing you to lose your hair with all the problems that he gave you. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least to my advisor Ms. Lin. I think it was somewhere in my second semester that I told you I'll try to be the valedictorian and uh, to make you proud and today here I am and I hope that I've made you proud. probably the same with your other advisees. So Miss Lin, thank you for always being there for me. And since my parents are not here, can you have can you hug me after they come? <laughs> to the unsung heroes of AEP, I believe that we owe them a lot for what they have done for us. To Miss Shamala, Miss Kalai, and everyone else in the office. Thank you for helping us with the petty stuff like printing our transcripts and also entertaining our parents' persistent phone call patiently. <laughs> to the UMC people, thank you for always cleaning up the mess that we students leave behind and providing us with a clean studying environment. Yeah. They deserve a round of applause for what they've done. <laughs> Class of Summer 11, this is the end of our studies here in Haiti. But this is definitely not the end of us in ADP. In fact, we'll probably be back here in 10 years' time for the ADP 25th anniversary birthday bash, organized by Mr. Leong, for, especially for us. <laughs> Honestly speaking, oh, he's not here. <laughs> Honestly speaking, I may not be the most qualified person to be up here. I mean, I'm not as smart as Michelle, it's got a 4.0. Nor am I as good looking as Jishuan. How are you? <laughs> but, since I somehow managed to find myself standing up here, I may as well take this opportunity to share with you something that hopefully would inspire you to soar to greater heights in life. It was a few days ago that a respectable old man was telling me his philosophy in life. Despite his old age, he is young at heart. For those of you who have taken his class, we know him as God. <laughs> that man, ladies and gentlemen, it's none other than Mr. Vijaya. I came into this world when the world was like this. 
now, I may not be Abraham Lincoln or Najib, <laughs> but when I leave this world, I hope to leave this world becoming like this, and that the increase is to what I have contributed. Class of Summer 11, we're moving into a global society from here onwards. It's about time we start doing things not only for ourselves, but for the society, the nation, and the world. We're probably one of the few talented people in this world who can start and finish an assignment two hours before it's due. <laughs> but we need to go beyond that and start thinking of how to utilize what we can do, not only for ourselves, but for the world. Where do we picture ourselves in 10, 20, 50 years time? Mr. Vijaya is still very much alive and kicking, lecturing to the students of ADP and getting the students to call him God. <laughs> how about us in our life? Can we make the world from this to this? You see, Class of Summer 11, our life is like an unfinished book that can be filled with plenty of stories. To some, it might be an awesome love story. To some, a story of hardship or success. I mean, we don't honestly know how the story of a book is like till we've read the ending. But our book of life is not just about reading it. It's about writing it. A book does not decide on the story. The author does. And ladies and gentlemen, we are the authors of our books in life. We decide what we want to do in our life, and every decision we make today leads us to where we are tomorrow. Friends, sometimes life may knock us down, and we need to pull ourselves back up. But don't ever let this stop you from writing your story, because at the end of the day, you are still the one writing your own stories. So start writing class of summer 11 and make it a good one. Thank you.